Hi viewers, welcome to our channel Dissection of Human Body. In this video, we are going to discuss about the mandible which is the bone of the lower jaw. My colleague Dr. Aparna Murlidharan will discuss about the mandible. Hello viewers, today we will see the osteology of mandible. Mandible is the bone that forms the lower jaw. It is the only mobile bone of the skull. So what you are seeing here is the mandible. Mandible is formed by two L-shaped pieces of bone uniting in the midline anteriorly at a point this area or this joint is called as symphysis menti which completes its ossification by two years of age. Mandible has mainly two parts. We have a horseshoe shaped body and two rami. So let us see the features of each one. This is the body of the mandible. You can see that it is horseshoe shaped and they meet in the midline. Each piece meet, meets in the midline at symphysis menti. The body of mandible has an outer surface and an inner surface. It has an upper or alveolar border and a lower border also called as base. Beyond the third molar tooth, the ramus is attached to the body of the mandible. So what are the features that we can see on the external surface of mandible? We will be seeing the features on one side only. The features are the same. So we can see that in the midline, in the lower part of the symphysis menti, there is a triangular prominence. This prominence is called as mental protuberance. At the lower two angles of mental protuberance are two tubercles called as mental tubercles. The area above and lateral to the symphysis menti is a depression below the incisor tooth. This is called as incisive fossa. Tracing from the mental tubercle towards the third molar tooth is an oblique line. This oblique line divides the external surface of body of mandible into an upper part and a lower part. The upper part above the oblique line bears a foramen. This foramen is called as mental foramen that transmits mental nerve and vessels. The area below the oblique line is related to three important structures from before backwards. We have the tortuous part of the facial artery, behind it is the facial vein and still behind is the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve. At the oblique line, below the three molar tooth, we have the attachment of buccinator muscle which extends up till the area behind the third molar called as the retromolar trigone. Now let us see the features on the internal surface of the body of mandible. So this is the internal surface of the body of the mandible. The most characteristic feature here is another oblique line as we saw outside is a line that starts a little below the third molar tooth and extends up till the internal aspect of symphysis menti. This line is known as mylohyoid line that gives origin to mylohyoid muscle. This line divides the internal surface of body of mandible into an area above and an area below. The area or fossa above is called a sublingual fossa which is related to the sublingual salivary gland. The area below the mylohyoid line is a concave fossa which is called as submandibular fossa which is related to the submandibular salivary gland. Sandwiched between the submandibular salivary gland and the submandibular fossa of mandible is the cervical part of facial artery. On the inner aspect of symphysis menti, we can see 
four prominent tubercles a pair of two superior tubercles and a pair of two inferior tubercles these tubercles are called genial tubercles or also called as mental spines so we have a pair of superior genial tubercle that gives attachment to a muscle of the tongue that goes above towards the tongue called as the genioglossus muscle and the inferior genial tubercles gives rise to a muscle that goes towards the hyoid bone is called as geniohyoid muscle the area between the third molar tooth and the mylohyoid line in this area we have an important relation that is lingual nerve lingual nerve in this area is covered only by a very thin layer of mucoperiosteum and so at this area an anesthetic agent can be given for lingual nerve block for dental procedures behind this area and in the retromolar trigone we have the attachment of a ligament called as pterygo mandibular raphe and inner to that we have the attachment of superior constrictor of pharynx so if you see this area behind the retromolar trigone from above we have the pterygo mandibular raphe from the front we have the attachment of buccinator muscle and from behind we have the attachment of superior constrictor of pharynx now the upper border of the body of the mandible is also called as the alveolar border which contains alveolar processes that form sockets for the lower set of teeth and the lower border of the body of mandible is also called as base of the mandible in the base of the mandible on either side of symphysis menti two oval impressions can be seen these impressions are called as the digastric fossa the digastric fossa gives origin to the anterior belly of digastric the base of the mandible also gives attachment to the investing layer of deep cervical fascia and superficial to that majority of the fibers of platysma also attaches to this border now having completed the body of mandible i will just add a point on mental foramen which is present midway between the upper border and lower border in an adult mandible the position of the mental foramen varies with age in edentulous mandible the position of the mental foramen is different and so it can be used to identify the age of the person now let us see the features of ramus so this upward projection behind the third molar tooth is called as ramus of the mandible it is a flat projection which has two surfaces an outer surface and an inner surface four borders an anterior border posterior border inferior border and superior border the superior border bears two processes as well a triangular pointed process called as a coronoid process and a condylar articular process now let us see the features on the external surface of ramus of mandible on the external surface the most characteristic feature is these muscular impressions of an important muscle of mastication which is called as masseter on the internal surface of the ramus of the mandible the striking feature is a foramen this foramen is called as mandibular foramen that transmits inferior alveolar nerve and vessels at the anterior end of the mandibular foramen is a tongue like projection called as lingula that gets attachment from sphenomandibular ligament which is derived from the perichondrium of meckel's cartilage which is the cartilage of the first pharyngeal arch starting from the mandibular foramen on the inner surface of the ramus is a groove this groove transmits mylohyoid nerve and vessels and so this groove is called as mylohyoid groove the area below the mylohyoid groove on the inner surface of the ramus has muscular impressions due to insertion of a muscle of mastication 
called as medial pterygoid muscle. Now, what are the features of the anterior border? The anterior border of the ramus continues downwards onto the body as the oblique line which we have discussed already and it continues upwards as the anterior border of the coronoid process. The posterior border of the ramus of mandible continues as the inferior border of the ramus at an angle. This angle is called as the angle of mandible which is usually 110 to 115 degree in an adult. The angle becomes 140 degree in a newborn as well as elderly age. So just like the mental foramen, angle of mandible can also be used to identify the age of the mandible. Now, on the superior border, as I have already said, there are two processes. We have a triangular pointed coronoid process and a condylar process. And there is a notch between them which is called as a mandibular notch. The mandibular notch transmits mesetric nerve and vessels. Coronoid process is formed by the pulling of temporalis muscle. So, the muscle which is attached to the tip, outer surface and anterior border of coronoid process extending to the anterior border of the ramus is the muscle of mastication called as temporalis. Now, let us see the features of the condylar process. The condylar process bears an upper dilated articular part which is called as the head of the mandible which is oval. Below the head is a narrow constricted region for the condylar process which is called as the neck of the mandible. In the anterior aspect of the neck of the mandible we can see an oval depression which is called as the pterygoid fovea that gives insertion to lateral pterygoid muscle. The articular part that is the head of the mandible articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint. The posterior aspect of the neck is related to a nerve called as auriculotemporal nerve. The angle of mandible gives attachment to a ligament called as stylomandibular ligament. So now let us summarize the nerves related to mandible. So, to the mental foramen, we have the mental nerve and vessels. On the outer surface of the body, we have the marginal mandibular nerve. Related to the mandibular notch, we have the mesetric nerve. Related to the area below the third molar tooth and above the mylohyoid line is the lingual nerve. Passing through the mandibular foramen is the inferior alveolar nerve. Passing through the mylohyoid groove is the mylohyoid nerve. And behind the neck of the mandible is the auriculotemporal nerve. What are the ligaments related to the mandible? Attached to the retromolar trigone is the pterygomandibular raphe. Attached to the lingula is the sphenomandibular ligament and attached to the angle of the mandible is the stylomandibular ligament. Now let us see the age related changes in mandible. So to tell once again, mental foramen lies midway between the upper border and lower border in an adult. Whereas it will be present towards the lower border in a younger child, in a newborn child and it will be present towards the upper border in an elderly person. So, this is an edentulous mandible of an elderly person. You can see the location of the mental foramen. It will be present towards the alveolar processes. It will be present closer to the alveolar processes and hence artificial dentures can compress the mental nerve that passes out through the mental foramen. Also to remember the angle of mandible that is the angle between posterior border and inferior border of the ramus will be more in case of edentulous mandible. It will be around 140 degree in an edentulous mandible but only 110 to 115 degree in an adult mandible. So to summarize the important features of mandible, it has a body which has an upper border that bears the tooth of the lower jaw, a lower border which is called as the base. This represents symphysis menti which closes around 2 years of age.
This is the mental protuberance. We have the mental foramen. We have an oblique line whose posterior end gives attachment to buccinator. The lower area is related to facial artery, facial vein and marginal mandibular nerve. On the inner surface of the body, we have an important line which is a mylohyoid line that gives attachment to the mylohyoid muscle. The area above is called the sublingual fossa, the area below is called the submandibular fossa. On the inner aspect of symphysis menti is a mental spines or genial tubercles. The superior ones give attachment to genioglossus, the inferior ones give attachment to the geniohyoid. On the inferior border, on either side of symphysis menti is the digastric fossa that gives attachment to anterior belly of digastric. The lower border or base gives attachment to investing layer of deep cervical fascia and platysma. Ramus has two surfaces and four borders. There are two processes separated by a notch, coronoid process and condylar process separated by mandibular notch that transmit masseteric nerve and vessels. There is the impression of masseter outside and the impression of medial pterygoid inside. On the inner aspect of the ramus is the mandibular foramen that transmits inferior alveolar nerve and vessels which is bounded by lingula anteriorly and starting from the foramen downwards is the mylohyoid groove that transmits mylohyoid nerve and vessels. And we have the condylar process which contains a head and a neck. Head is articular, neck bears a depression anteriorly called the pterygoid fovea for the insertion of lateral pterygoid muscles. Also remember the age related changes and important nerves related to mandible. Thank you for your listening.